All right, guys. We're three back two. again. We're outside three, two, again. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, go. We're CrossFit. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're joined by Ray Regno from. Where are you? What, what is your job at this point? What do you? What, what is my doing? job at this? What point? was your job? What was your job? What was what my job? job? So I, I was well. I work with Mike Bergner. Okay. So CrossFit weightlifting. That was the very first seminar staff that I joined. Um, I teach a level one seminar. I also help with a level two course. Uh, we are now going to be called Bergner Strength. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So people know you were teaching the CrossFit weightlifting. Yes. Right. So you did all the all the seminars. Mm -hmm. all did all the in travel. South America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the stuff. Because yeah. you speak Portuguese. Say on Portuguese. There you go. <laughs> and um, so you were the CrossFit specialty one of the CrossFit specialty course. Yes. I don't think people know how this works. Would you do, would you explain us how the specialty course? Because you were basically you started studying with Coach B. Yes. So the, the specialty course was actually a separate thing from CrossFit training department. Yeah. So I'm also part of the level one, level two training staff, and okay. I teach the flexibility course. So we still have to be careful so yeah. it doesn't get fired. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So <laughs> I'm on both staffs. Yeah. Uh, I was originally, I started with Coach Bergner, and then I added, I joined the other staff a little bit later, like a year later. And But the courses are totally different, and a lot of people yeah. don't realize that they were different, that they were managed differently. The old way was that CrossFit headquarters manage all the registration yep. manage all the administration of uh like like when people registered for courses well they sign up through crossfit.com so like all the behind all the yeah, back all, stuff things, yeah. Yeah. all the back office stuff yeah. um and then crossfit would take 30 percent of that and then whatever the 70 percent would go to crossfit weightlifting okay and so as team. an organization, so yes. then that organization, so it's not like that just becomes. So you are a contractor, oh yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're not a contractor. an employee like you do the level one, level two. Correct. I'm a W right, right, two okay. for CrossFit <laughs> for that, and then I was a, I was an in, well, I still am an independent contractor for Burner Strength. Okay. And so Burner Strength existed then; it still yeah. exists now. Yeah. But now the way that the courses are run is that they're run as an affiliate program, just like the gyms are. So the SME now is mm -hmm. run as an affiliate. If you want to be known as a CrossFit preferred course, you're gonna pay an affiliate fee. And so what that does is it frees up HQ and it also gives the SME courses a lot of freedom also. Yeah, I was about to say. But okay, uh, from just a content curious, standpoint I don't know, yeah. as yes. well? Okay. Yeah. Right, uh, but then there'll be only one CrossFit weightlifting course? Mm, I don't know. Oh, that, that's, I'm kind of curious about that one. That I don't oh, know. Uh, so anybody could be, so if anybody, that wants to do a CrossFit weightlifting course, maybe would be able to do so as long as they pay the affiliation fee. So it's like a CEUs basically. Yeah. Same shit. Yeah. As it's long as they approve it, it. It's similar. Yeah. Yeah. They have to apply for it. Oh. So there's going to be. I'm curious to know how that works. I'm also just. So what? Also, what? What is that process like? Or maybe it hasn't been fleshed out. To, I would I guess that you knows. don't get to just walk in and say. Hey, I'd like to do a this specialty course and everything. Oh, I would guess it. in this setup, not only that, you have to build it, yes. market it, <laughs> keep doing sure. it in some sort of capacity already, and then show them a finished product. Yes. Yeah, so there is actually is a process that they formalize and put together. I don't have it all memorized just yet. I don't blame you. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter probably. <laughs> no, but it's like the CEUs. You have to show what you do. You yes. have to. Yeah, we went through the process. Yes. Yeah, so there's yeah. there's quality. There's quality standards that they have that uphold for customer service and all those things. Mm -hmm. And so you actually have to earn that. Well, uh, I'm curious. Since you were a contractor and not an employee for CrossFit Weightlifting, mm -hmm. the content was dictated by Coach B, but CrossFit had some say in it? Uh, I don't know exactly how the the content was created, but Coach uh, Cody Bergner, so sorry, Bo Bergner, yeah. he's uh, Coach's second oldest son. He's yeah. the one who's, who's running the show. Okay. Pretty much, he writes the curriculums. The level one course is Coach B's course. So that's the course that Coach Bergner himself wrote. And there's been changes right. over the years too and some updates to it, but 99.99% of it is Coach Bergner. That's his yeah, system. The warm -up, yeah, all that stuff is Coach Bergner. The level two, Bo put that together as uh, as like a, an advanced course. And I think it's great. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot of it goes into like assessments and helping people figure, understand the programming better. Yes. So it's a great, matriculation from the basics and he wrote that when he put that okay. together and it's still a work in progress we're still making it better and better um, another thing that we're working on now is we're making other courses so one thing that i'm working on right now is a crossfit weight as a weightlifting and mobility course for bergner strength so bergner strength cross weightlifting and mobility i keep trying to say crossfit but yeah. we're not going <laughs> to have that name anymore it's yeah. just bergner strength weightlifting and mobility course yeah. so so then you yeah so you have complete control of the content yes 
Yeah, right. including then things like locations mm -hmm. and ticket sales and yeah, yeah. And marketing. <laughs> And the marketing. marketing. Yeah. So Since there's fun. no Facebook and Instagram yeah. CrossFit anymore, <laughs> yes. we because we shot the last podcast that you see for us is yesterday. It, well, that, we that might have been depending on the release schedule, might be a couple weeks. But you remember that one? Yeah, but for us it's yesterday, <laughs> and we learned this morning that it was yeah no more. Yeah, it's just no so more. Yeah, that's gonna be. But for the most way. part, we had to promote it on, our, on our own sure. anyway. For sure. Yeah, you had to do your. We had to right? do our own promotion anyway. That yeah. was just something that was a fact of life for us. And I think as affiliate owners too, is you still have to promote and build your own yeah. thing. You always had to. The yes. ones that didn't are the ones that I have don't think a it changes now. that many things. I, I just don't think so. I just think it's scary as hell. Yeah. I think the it's idea weird of leaving walking of away from millions of people I watching think your stuff. That takes balls and it might <laughs> certainly might be ill advised. Yeah, it's it's it is odd to me in an industry where you're trying to help people. No, my to only just my only question is where do you watch across the games and the sanctionals now? That's true. W where do you get the live events feed yeah. from? That's all independent now, too. But to be I completely honest like with you, how do you get it? I didn't yeah. even follow CrossFit on Instagram or on Facebook. I did yeah. it on Facebook. Yeah. I had the cross. I followed the CrossFit, the CrossFit Games on Facebook. I never looked at. I that never stuff. did it on Instagram. So I actually just answered a question on Instagram. Someone because I posted about that today. I was yeah. like, yeah. you know, like everyone's so making a so big hissy yeah. fit about it, like, dude. When I opened my affiliate, CrossFit didn't have an Instagram. Yeah. And I've yeah. looked at the Facebook page maybe once or twice over the last years. It used to be the years. dot com. But back then, it was a dot com. Yeah. You posted your, in the comment section. You posted yeah. your score and your yeah. stuff. And people were trolling there. And maybe yeah. that's what they want to go, go back to. But no, more, no more comments. That's not a bad way to actually conduct it. But here's the thing. <laughs> with I don't want to deal with Instagram comments. I don't I, with Facebook I, I, comments. I understand that. Here's problem. what we do now. That was a lot of work, actually. If you don't like yeah. it. That's, it becomes a lot of shit, you know? But I think the, the genius in it, in it is that the affiliates need to do the legwork. Yeah. Some guy, somebody was complaining, well, how are people going to know about CrossFit? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, if the affiliates do a good job of it, then people will hear about CrossFit. Yeah. And that's the point now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's just, well, I, I think he's doing now what... He wish he had done before the CrossFit game became so big. I think the CrossFit became something else because of the games. Like he, th he got so big so fast, they all went <gasps> and got stuck with the baby. And well, nobody knew how to deal with it. Dave Castro took over, and Greg Glassman never liked it. Yeah. Not Dave Castro, uh, Job, the CrossFit games. Yeah. And so now I think he's saying, "Fuck it, I want my baby back." Yeah, I agree. And I, it is. It's gonna be interesting to see how it goes because, like we said the last time we talked about this, is. Uh, Glassman still says he wants to maintain that tip of the spear because then you know what's possible. But that doesn't mean they're going to run it. Like, I exactly. guy's idea of selling it to Rogue, to me, makes a shitload of sense. Yeah, it, Glassman know. does not want to deal with it. Yeah. And Dave Castro could be in charge of it again, his way. Rogue pays the bill, everybody's happy. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine Dave being happy right now. Yeah. Like, because his whole world basically got shattered within a few months. Uh, what's his job? I mean, he's still in charge of the cert and all that stuff, but I can't imagine him being very happy right now. Yeah. Sell it to Rogue. Rogue will do a great job. Rogue is doing good. Yeah. And stuff like that. They can bring like Olympic weightlifting platforms for the games, do the records breaker, all that stuff. That'd be mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. So Ray, w what is your interpretation as far as like, I think I know what, what you think about all this <laughs> stuff, the, the change in the health direction and the, yeah. the less emphasis yeah, yeah, on performance. Like that, yeah. But, but what, it, what is, I want to know what your opinion is on it with the context of maybe what CrossFit is to you. Okay. You know? Because uh, you open your own affiliate, right? Yeah, I've had my yeah. affiliate since 2007. OG? So we Jesus. were there before the games exploded. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, I remember exactly when it, we opened in October 2007, and that was when the first games happened, right? Up at Aromas? Yep. I yeah, seven remember. Or seven or and it was just like, we were talking about it. I'm like, okay, no big deal. Seven. And to be completely honest with you, the CrossFit games have never been a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, a, it was something. I'm sure that's not where you open your affiliate. No, for. Yeah, no. You had no idea this was going to No, I, had no, I didn't yeah. even know the games existed when we yeah. opened our yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, there's a cool way to do conditioning. And we were doing jujitsu at the time. So for us, uh, CrossFit was just a tool for conditioning yeah. for jujitsu. Which was the point. Yeah, that right? was a that point was for idea. us. Play sports. I remember last yeah. month. Like, th the one <coughs> thing I like with all this is we can go back to maybe now looking at early CrossFit. I remember the videos from Greg last month yes. saying, play sports all the time. This is supposed to be for, you know, for yes. to get you healthier and yes. conditioning and all that stuff. And the, and the constantly varied nature of it, that by definition, that that doesn't still limit you to the nine movements that they, you know what I mean? The, there's yeah. a lot of stuff just take those little things out into a vacuum and all of a sudden anything that's not that is not CrossFit. Anymore, yeah, which by <coughs> definition <coughs> makes no sense. 
Yeah. 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 The change doesn't affect me very much at all because mm -hmm. my when I first when I first took over my affiliate when I first started being the head coach in my gym, I remember at first I thought, oh, CrossFit Games, this is this is a thing. But I learned about a year into it that that, that those people, that demographic does not pay the bills. Yes. They're kind they of th the kind of diva ish. Yep. And it causes division in the gym. Yeah. And if I really wanted to be <coughs> successful as a business, because at the end of the day you still have to pay your own bills, I have to I have to cater to the ninety nine percentile. Which mm -hmm. he has nothing to do with those guys. No. Yeah. And but yeah, but that's always been my argument is the my always problem with Instagram of CrossFit is like that started changing last year, but for like five years straight it was just a games. Yeah. And so now you had people showing up in your gym wanting to do a muscle up. Yes. Knowing full well they'll never do one. Mm-hmm. You know? Even during the open, they bust their shoulders, but they yeah. never do one. I had a rule in my gym: you were not allowed to do a muscle up if you didn't have a strict muscle up. Yeah. And the only time there was an exception was during the games because people would really cry about it. I want to do muscle up. You can't do them safely, but I'll let you do it during the open. That's the only time you're <laughs> yeah, allowed to exactly, do it. That's yeah. free raining out right now. Yeah. But yeah, and then they were like, ah, yeah, I busted my shoulder. And yeah. I'm sitting there like this. Yeah, like, you're like, you're like, like what do I see? Yes, that, that's the hardest thing. Is yeah. it's like. I'm just gonna You're watch this. For them to I'm, gonna watch, I'm gonna watch yeah. this person risk everything that they're training. One to year of their lives for the open that no one uh, yep. that no one's ever gonna see. Yep. To finish sixtieth yeah, in our town for Christ's sake. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very curious to see if no Facebook, no Instagram will bring back the open to more um, to a less crazy level of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because right now, with all that shit, it just drove people to. It's like they were living for Af Afghanistan. Yeah. You know, and getting ready for that, right? Yep. The level of anxiety around the Open was insane. Yeah. Maybe that way it will go back to what it was. It's just a community event for your gym, like Friday Night Lights, and then we're all there and sharing your own community. And you don't need to know what the other guys are doing because who cares? That's what I am seeing with this is it does seem like it's less, uh, there is a real goal of making things less centralized. He's a libertarian. Yeah, which which then means now that this is you, this is your thing. Make it your people, your. But whole this thing. is why you both opened. I opened an affiliate back then for six mm -hmm. months, by the way, <laughs> and we all did it because we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do Olympic weightlifting, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So I did strongman yeah. instead. Yeah, I think that that's a that's a great idea that I hope would actually happen, but there's a lot of culture change that needs to happen because over the last five six years, for a lot of people, particularly in Brazil. So oh. I, I run a coach's oh my God. Yeah. I run a coach's yeah. master yeah. group in yeah. Brazil. Dubai is like that too. Oh. Brazil is the largest growing community of CrossFitters in the world outside the United States. Yeah. And like right now, I th the other thing I do on top of the seminars is I run a coach's mentoring program. I have 120 some coaches all over the world that I meet with every week. And we're just talking about how to do CrossFit, just do CrossFit the way yeah. we taught CrossFit. And the, with the Brazilian community in particular, yeah. for them, CrossFit is the games. Yeah. And you can't be a coach unless you look the part. You can't be a coach unless you can do these things. And for me, it's mudando la cultura. We're trying to yeah. change the culture. We want them to understand that, no, CrossFit's for your accountant, for your lawyer, for your grandma, for that 15-year-old kid who's super awkward yeah. and can't move, like, to it's save their life because yeah. all they do is play is video games. It's like, no, CrossFit is about, and also, eh, she's RX, right? They're all like, you yeah. have to, eh, she's, I have to RX. Like, Okay, if you RX friend, but it took you thirty five minutes, yes. was that actually R no? Like R a friend is an RX unless you're on the ground after three minutes and yeah. like do yeah. the bacon sizzle. Like R no, RX means intensity. RX intensity. doesn't mean the weight. What's I intense? Yeah, that, that's the stuff we have to explain. I like I like to write the time. workout friend down on the board. Okay, but instead of listing weights, yes. the RX was blood in your lungs in four minutes or less. <laughs> And, no, like and so that's so there we are. Do you remember when uh, Rich Fonning did Grace with 220, right? Except he did it in four minutes, yeah, oh. right, or six minutes or whatever the fuck yeah. it was. And so after that, everybody in LA did. I'm sure everyone. A lot of people, was a lot of people got some ten minute graces after that. Thirty two. <laughs> Jesus. Because there was a barbell for boobs. Yes. And he was grace for time, right? So guys, the all the way to 220 took him 32 minutes to do grace. He did an imam. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. did an imam. Yeah. By the way, you suck. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but, but the whole thing was absurd. Everybody was doing it with 100 kilos, taking way more than 10 minutes. Trust me, uh, <laughs> it was uh, because Robert Lodo did it, did grace, but with 315, and it took him 30 minutes to do it. That's yeah. what everybody wanted. And I'm like, guys, that, that is not the point. <laughs> I think that that <sighs> phrase right there is the. Yes. It, it sums it all up. That's not the point. 
It's intent is everything. W the intent of Fran is intensity. Like, you don't put the Cute bar down. Yourself. You don't come down from the pull-up bar. You don't stop to get chalk. You just go. Yeah. And one of my favorite ways to warm up for Fran is I have people go, I walk, have people walk in the door. Who wants a sub three-minute Fran? Everyone goes, me. I'm like, okay. So that you can all see that it is physically possible to complete these movements in this time domain. Mm -hmm. We're going to do Air Fran. So you're going to pretend like you're going to clean the bar off the ground. There's nothing in your hands. You're going to yeah, do a clean. Fake it. You're going to do 21 thrusters with air. And then you're going to walk over to your pretended pull-up bar, and you're going to do 21 pull-ups yeah. with air. And then you're going to do your 15, 15, 9, 9. And everyone finishes under three minutes, yeah. except for maybe the grandma who's just thick about it. Yeah. But yeah. that case, I'm going to scale her reps anyway. Yeah. But it's like you all see that it's physically, it is physically possible to finish all these movements in less than three minutes, yes? OK, cool. Now you need to do your task is to scale this, this workout so that you can finish it in that time domain. Add yeah. weight up to the point where you can do all 21 with, uh, without stopping. Killing yourself, but yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I like it, yes. And, but that's the intent. That's the intent of intent the workout. Intent is everything. Because intensity every time. Like they don't, like and here, by the way, um, that's in the US at least, they went through the early phase. Mm -hmm. So they're still the OGs that yes. explain all that because they were there at the beginning. Guy, saying, guys, it was one workout a day. Mm -hmm. So five, five times a week, and then you were murdering yourself with intensity, right? Europe didn't even get that because they got there way after the games. So all they saw back uh, the when games. they arrive is the games yes. and those 30, 40 minute imams yes. from Invictus yes. and the pro uh, programming from Rudy and Misfits mm -hmm. and all that Thousand shit. Thousand rep chippers. And uh, like no, he did <laughs> Murph as accessory work. I make that as a joke, but people don't believe me ever. But that was a program where I, I, I saw it <laughs> was uh, fun at 80% was warm up and the assistance assistant work was Murph. And I, that's when I started to go, guys, ca can we talk? Because yeah. we all, you all need a shrink right now. Like, and I, back then, by the way, I got blasted for saying shit like yeah. that. When I, what everybody knows now, oh, back then. When, when I opened my mouth <coughs> back then, I got blasted so hard. But it was the Europeans, they, they grew up in CrossFit with that. Yeah. So you see them doing those 30-minute, 40-minute workout. The f like, there's a gym here that has the dumbest programming. Every time I watch it, just for fun. Because <laughs> I'm like, who came up with that one? <laughs> yeah. And I want to see people do that shit. Um, and they, it's 30 minutes. No one is pushing. the. And I'm like, guys, if we do a sub six minute workout, I bet I can beat most of you. And that's that's a sad statement. Yeah. yeah. Know what I mean, uh, and so you see the Brazilians that are fucking nuts with that. Dubai is a lot like that, by the way. And then you, on the other side, you got the Europeans that only train that 30, 40 minute window of super long workout because you got to murder people to make them do progress. They don't understand that most CrossFit workouts back then was under 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was barbell once a week, hero workout once a month. Yeah. Done. Yes. And yes. I think it's been three, maybe three years, four years since I took my level one. I don't believe that it's changed dramatically in that time. Not a lot. No. But I will tell you this, they don't teach it in the way that you described that people were just, you know what I mean, with the 30, 40. The whole thing, and I'll, as dead serious, is taught. Yes. Like from especially just programming, right? The mm -hmm. way they get into program is taught the intensity, the singular component. Yes. If you're going to do strength yeah, work, you're building up yeah. it as accessory into strength, and that's it. And then if you're going to do an intensity component, just like you described, good warm up, build up, kill your shit, cool off, one done. time. That's it. Yeah, yeah, one time. And and that's that is the way that it has been taught, and I yes. think it's the way it always is taught. Yeah. What I think happens is you get these people who either don't listen or they get in they mm -hmm. miss that part in the beginning of, if of yeah. the development because across you get it. the game and yeah and they get in and they set their sights on the games and they are just so resistant because you know what it's like you i'm sure you've helped many coaches who transition from the now i do my strength work then i do my metcon and then you go and you're just trying to funnel all this shit into a class the when really it's like let's just do this one thing and do the shit out the of it. The problem was well. always the same. It's that guy trying to make regionals. He's not good enough to go there, but he thinks he is, and he's gonna basically train four times a day. But he's gonna have to coach to pay the bills, and so at least use your gym for free or whatever. He's the problem because he doesn't give a shit about who come. He doesn't pay the bills. He's yeah. he does two classes. If he makes money, he makes what twenty five bucks an hour twice a week. So he's making two hundred dollars off of you a month that does not make him an employee. He's not coming to meeting. You have no idea of the gym culture that you're trying to establish. Yeah. The soul of your gym, he doesn't give a shit because he's not part of it because yeah. he's doing his own programming anyway. Yep. Uh, but he's coaching two classes and basically killing your vibe. And in the back, training by himself, doing misfit programming on Invictus, basically saying to everybody, your programming is shit. Exactly. And giving people that want... 
who want to get better, like, oh, I'm supposed to do that. Look at that guy. He looks so good. And he, he has a big snatch. Yeah, but what you don't know is, first of all, that guy sucks compared to Matt Frazier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt Frazier doesn't train like that. Matt Frazier <coughs> is a pro athlete who doesn't do anything but at the time live in his, his mom's basement. Uh, so you have to be borderline a serial killer to, you know, go to that level. I think there were very, very few balanced games athletes. And yeah. th those where people are doing nothing but basically it's not you. Yeah. Talent-wise, physically, yeah. uh, life-wise, it's not you. And so those coaches, for me, were the biggest problems because they created a very toxic culture. So how much of this, though, do you think is because the way the games did come out, the games was much closer and realistic and accessible to the average person in there was 2008, that. 2009, 2010. You couldn't make it. And, and, and in those yeah. times, yeah. people started, th they, started to and, believe. and every yeah. year when they became more professionalized and the cream rose to the top and more people came in, which meant there was a much larger and more diverse talent pool, all of a sudden this thing that was just beyond their grasp is fucking miles away. But they still have the hope. And they still have that hope because they just, I as far as they're concerned, it never got any further. But you know where you saw that culture when the grid started? And you saw people leaving their gym, athletes leaving their gym, leaving their life behind to go get paid two grand a month to be a, to be pro athletes. And I was like, you guys are nuts. Yeah. This will, I never thought it would work for a second. Three years later, are they still? No. No, they're, they're gone. not around no, anymore. No. They're gone, yeah. It yeah. went, it went, and they put, they went too big, too early, too much. It was, there was a lot of, I lot think, a lot of money problems mistakes. and some mistakes, but. Uh, I, I think the overall issue is that gym owners kind of got caught up with the games when it started. And it's kind of like, you ever saw the story about like a frog, you put him in water on the stove and the water's, yep. it's normal. And you turn the heat up real slow and then real, real slow, real, real slow, and then it gets to the point where it's too late, and then they, they boil themselves. Yeah. But if you jump into a hot, bo hot boiling they thing, jump they jump out right away. But what happened was in 2007, 2008, when the game started to slowly cool. build momentum, mm -hmm. it was cool. Like, and then the gym owners are like, oh, these people are coming because they see the CrossFit Games. We should program more like the CrossFit Games athletes program. Yeah. And then they got completely distracted from what CrossFit actually is, that it's one workout a day, that we're teaching virtuosity, we want people to move well, all those things. But then 10 years later, it's 2019 now, right? Yeah. Yep. It's 12 years later for me I have my affiliates 12 years old <laughs> it's like I still remember the good old days but the problem is that a lot of gym owners came in when the, when the water was already hot and like this is a status quo this is what and, we do or there are some coaches who slowly let themselves boil to death yeah and they're boiling to death now and they don't know what to do because now they're at the mercy of the members who think that CrossFit is this and they are too That's gutless yeah. they're too gutless to educate their members like for me I didn't deal with any BS it's like guys we do virtuosity here. If you don't like it, you can go join this gym down the street. Invictus is over here. Yeah. CrossFit OB is over here. My buddy Ace is down the street. There's another gym just open right here. If you don't want to be coached, I'm okay with you not being here. Definitely. But they're not. Not every coach wa wants to do that. They're like, oh, I got to pay my bills. I got to make sure everyone comes in. Like, they, they're they're yeah. trying to cater to people who are telling them how to run the, CrossFit. The, but you know, like from the business side, it's the same thing that happened from the athlete side. It's people that uh, got in into CrossFit early and rode the wave, got mm -hmm. 100 members, and suddenly think, that, oh, I'm good at business. No, they're no, not. you're not. <laughs> you just, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to be mean, but we all been there where it's like, because yeah. no, when I opened my gym, I knew shit about business, mm -hmm. I still don't. But uh, if you opened back then, you could get 100 people. Yeah. And that made you think that you were good at business. Well, no, you just got in early. Yeah. Yes. And so, but now you're five years later, and there's a lot of competition, and you're bitching about it, but you still suck at business. It was the same thing with the games. Like, back then, you could make the games. Yeah, but five years later, you couldn't. Yeah. Now, you can't make regionals because they're fucking good. Yeah. And, 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 and now the regionals is gone, gone. It's not even a problem. Whereas, I, I still like, even when regionals was around, you know, if you, ha you have those people like, well, I want to train this way and this way, and, and it's like, well, listen, if, if you think you want to go to regionals, uh, you can go to that gym and not qualify for regionals out of their gym. Then. But I'm not going to do it. No bullshit for, for you to not gym. qualify because you don't yeah. work hard. You're mm -hmm. not. You don't have any of the things that it takes, except that you really want it, but you don't want it. No, you know, this is a thing we've run yeah. into often with people, and we talked about it today, where it's like you do need to ask your clients. Really, it's like, uh, what, do you what do you want? Why do you want it? Yeah. Yeah. And and it's the same thing for these people that now you see all the shit from this backlash against CrossFit. This thing is like, I'm like, what are you defending? Because you're defending on behalf of this CrossFit thing that 
CrossFit isn't. Yeah, that's my CrossFit's biggest thing. That. Is that, like, like, do what you guys you know what CrossFit is? Because no, I don't think no, they don't. Like, <laughs> this is where the French were killing me. Like when I was there, and then I said, like, guys, like, stop with the forty-minute workout. This is absurd. Yes. And then they all started to get upset. I was like, do you know what CrossFit is? And we started to go in the conversation, and I realized none of them basically knew who Greg Glassman was. If he walked in the room, they wouldn't know who he is. Yeah. And I was like, did you watch the video? Of course not, because it's in English and those motherfuckers don't know shit to speak <laughs> it. But uh, <laughs> they start, it actually is getting better. I'm joking with, I still love you all. Uh, they're actually coming onto the main pro program and everything. Like the uh -huh. groups is getting better. But I mean, like. We're, every episode is also has French subtitles. So okay. Yes, yeah, well. So, th so they're going to under, they're going to, yeah. they're going to hear this no matter oh, what. Oh, they do. <laughs> they do anyway. And then they still send messages. <coughs> we still love each other. It's just, it's a complicated relationship. <laughs> um, and, and I'm like, guys, you need to study the game. If you're really, if you're a coach, you're a business owner, you need to study the game. It's like Jujitsu, mm -hmm. not knowing who, how the Gracie family started, who, not knowing who Maeda yeah. is, mm -hmm. not knowing who Kimura is. Yeah. You have to be a student of the game. You have to learn the history of yeah. what you do. Like, you know, you know like I, I play pool. I, trust me, I know who Efren Reyes is. Uh, it, it, so they don't, they, if, you don't, if you haven't seen the early Greg Glassman video, do yourself a favor or go watch them because then you'll understand what the point Mm -hmm. was and is yeah and maybe i wouldn't mind going back to that here's it was working too by the way it was working just yeah. fine and here's the problem too I mean, and this is what i learned pretty early on was if you were looking at market share how many people are there that can actually maybe go to the games maybe go to regionals maybe go to regionals yeah, yeah. okay if you are targeting two thousand the open how it, about that exactly the market's very small if you yeah. want to actually have a business that makes money because that's your passion is to run to teach people fitness. You have a much you have much better potential to get members if you're focusing on the demographic of people that Cross was actually made for. Yeah, regular like people. Regular people. Yeah. There's way more regular people than there are decent freaks. Everybody talks about that, and so few people do it. It is because it's not sexy to exactly, them. Exactly, and it's such a hard one. So like we we face that all the time because I don't really have athletes that I train anymore, and it's you you see it in on on street credit. I have far less street credit now that I don't deal with Invictus all the time compared to before. Where yeah. I've now I'm actually doing like uh, with the groups that we have and all that stuff, we're doing real work on the ground for regular people, which is the mission, right? Yeah. And but we get a lot less street credit out of that than we get from me when I was working with Invictus. One of the things Richard brought up too that I thought was interesting is very often in CrossFit when people's come in through your door and they sign up, right? What do you refer to them as almost always? You're an athlete. Yeah, an athlete. we say athletes because I think because of the games. But yeah. if you look yeah. at the old, at the old literature, it was clients. The, exactly. That's still and where I, they are. And now, yeah. and, and <laughs> I did this. This was a thing I learned in you know in, a, in another business. But I re all of our people they were referred to as our clients, mm -hmm. and this was a business in which most people call them customers, right? But if you think you're dealing with a professional. You refer to your clients as clients, and they're mm -hmm. going to say, okay, this is how this transaction is. If you go to the doctor and he calls you a, a customer, you're like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, Which, exactly, trust yeah. me, you're more of a customer there than you are in my it gym, totally I'll tell you that. But I think that I, they immediately become identified with the athlete. And what is an athlete that does CrossFit? It's either the games athlete or they start calling themselves a CrossFitter. Yeah. And, and I think that starts... It's just one of those little things, one of those little but word by things. By the way, can we all up. agree that the reason the games got so famous is because they all look so good? Of course. No, like, so, but that's what kills me because people say, I want to go to the games. I'm like, no, you want to look like them. Let's be honest. <laughs> and that, I know, but if we market it like this, right, that would actually be simpler because people go through the street and so, uh, from the street coming in, say, instead of I want to um, do a muscle up, they say, I want to look like such and such. You'd be like, sure, four Perfect. years, uh, let's do that, right? Yep. And they'd be like, yeah, but I need to lose 60 pounds. I'm like, yeah, that's why I said four years. Uh, and I need to do this. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be a shit ton of work. I'm like, yeah, exactly. But you want to do it? Let's do it, right? Yeah. That'd be so much easier on us if yeah. they would told us the truth yeah. from the beginning. You don't want a muscle up. You just want to look. You just want to look, look like That's you can do muscle. That's it. Yeah. Which is what we all started training. <laughs> yes. There's nothing shameful about it. We all yes. like to look good in the mirror. Here's like, the why is <laughs> that? We can. I know CrossFit started by bashing Global Gym and shit like that. But let's be honest. If there was mirrors, 
in CrossFit gyms. There'll be a lot of eyes People on will be standing in People around. will be like, yeah, let me take my shirt yeah, look at my butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> like, that's why there was never a shirt on, because those guys look good or stuff. Like, come on. Speaking of that, I don't remember who had presented this, uh, this dilemma to me at some point. But if you had to choose between looking stronger than you are <laughs> or being stronger than you look, which one do you go with? Most people are going to say the first one. I will yeah. always, I always want to look like I can, I'm stronger exactly. than I am. Who yeah. cares? Who gives a shit? I'll just leave by because myself. Because I'll be no honest, matter, no one will ever know. If it. I'm dead serious, <laughs> I don't need to be any stronger than I am, truthfully. Like, to exist in the world. Pound yolk, I'm to, good. To exist in the world, like, we're good in that department. But if I looked like I could squat, a thousand pounds. You walk into a room and people go yeah. like this. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like, exactly. Then you're set. That's like almost every Brazilian coach that I know. It's yeah. like they look really fit, but they've got zero stability. Yeah, <laughs> like zero they're overhead yeah. and they're like, yes, yeah, everything's exactly, broken. Yeah. You're just like, oh my but god. But they can move really fast. They can move yeah. really fast. But they can try to move really fast. It's oh, but yeah. they just like it looks like they're gonna die every time they move <laughs> the bar. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was so surprised to see uh, Brazil grow that fast. At first, I was like, it'll never work because it's a culture of looking good. And that's about it. But and, that's and still the emphasis, even in CrossFit. It's like, I want to look good. And um, there is a small, I, I, I don't want to like bash them all, but there is a small demo, there's a small group of them that actually do care about virtuosity. And it's awesome. Like, there's always a, a few, there's a yeah, few yeah. of them, and they're working hard to try. We say mudando a cultura. We're trying to change the yeah. culture in Brazil to make sure that that virtuosity is key. But it was the same thing. But it's hard. My friend Simon is in Dubai and he's a, mm -hmm. you know he's a flow master. You know Simon. He's yeah, a yeah, flow yeah, master Simon. for Asia, and he's fighting as hard as he can yes. against the games and all that stuff. So I'm sure he's happy. But a lot of the gyms they are, they don't, <laughs> they just hire. So the good-looking the, coaches. The, 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 all like games athletes and say, come coach. Even if the guy has never coached a class in his life, yeah. they're going to bring him, pay what, him and everything. What if he's a dick? Exactly. <laughs> they don't care because he's he looks good. Right. He yeah. looks good. He's got credit. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You gave street credit to your to your gym. But um, and those poor people are walking, like killing themselves. Like, I feel I feel bad for everybody. They got stuck into a, a mean place. That's why, like, the changes in CrossFit have been talking about it for like what three years now yeah the guys greg lastman hit the games I w you have to understand where this is going yeah and no one no one was listening i was like i said that my, my very first seminar you know that greg was lastman hit I, the games. I, I i and i'm dead serious i didn't have this perspective i knew i wanted to help normal people i didn't have this perspective when i opened my affiliate i did not i really just didn't know any better and then until we started talking like it opened my eyes to the fact well maybe a a competition movement standard doesn't matter. Like may, may, maybe, maybe, maybe holding my clients accountable doesn't mean that you need to hit depth right now. You yeah. know, maybe it means that we're doing the work to get you better. Oh, you know what I mean? And we're it building the whole thing. It doesn't help them play with their kids on the weekend. No. Exactly. I gotta tell you, like, and and uh, I didn't, but I didn't get understand that until you had brought that up in that capacity. That like the, that there is separateness. And as a person who had, I think I owned my affiliate before I even recognized that they were two separate things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm not fucking that stupid, but I went all the way that far and didn't know that. So I don't blame all these people for ending no, up not knowing. I, I don't blame them. I, yeah. I'll just, like Ray said, can we please change the culture? So yeah. stop getting upset at the whole thing because that might be the best thing that ever happened. The, okay, I don't think the problem is what Glassman did. Maybe it's the way he did it. Of course. Right? It yeah. could have been a little bit smoother <laughs> around the edges. Yes. <laughs> but, but I'm going to go, I'm, but here's but the deal too, yeah. Julian. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of people that are going to like the things that you would eventually be like, I'm sure with Julian was maybe a little nicer about it. Yes. Or, you know what I, I mean? So, so it's okay. I'm uh, <laughs> sure that's going to happen next. Um, <laughs> no, but by the way, I'm sure the regular, unless they're going broke tomorrow, and go belly up. Unless of that, I'm guessing Glassman has a long-term plan. And he, n if he needs to change the culture, fuck it, let's do it then. Yeah. Let's do it now because I think it the means, before it gets the worse. the means justify the ends. It's like we need people to see that, I mean. Fuck it. Yeah, although it's not doing it, it's not working. Yeah. People, are getting, like, people are confused about it. They don't realize yep. that they're two different things. Yeah. Like one teaches mechanics, consistency, intensity. is what we teach every weekend at the level one course. Yeah. Mechanics first, consistency of those good mechanics, and then go faster. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but, but we're going to be on the thrash. Yeah, not longer, longer. Faster. Eight to 12 minutes at yes, most. Exactly. And then occasionally a long one just to mess with your head. It, and, but that's variance, right? But then, like you yes. said, you go to gyms like every single day. It's a 30-minute workout. And, and like 40 minute, 40 minute thing. And yeah, but it's like, like four four girl workouts a week. Ugh. You know, like oh, that's just that's, those are the easy ones. That's your warm up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
It's no, it's but the problem is it's too hero workout. That's yeah. uh, a week. That's when I knew the shit was about to go bad. Is um, suddenly you saw people programming hero workouts every week mm -hmm. in their gym. It used to be once a month, and yes. then suddenly it's every week. I was like, oh, even yeah. when the dot com started to go that route, I was like, guys, I wouldn't do I that if I were you. I just kind of assumed that the people who did that did it because. You didn't have to type in the details of the workout into your no, deal. It was just a pull-down menu on Wattified. You can go Murph. But I I think <laughs> kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier with the coaches, I just feel like a lot of people go to the level one course and then suddenly think, I know everything. Yeah. And I, I've been to 50 level ones, and I still walk away with something yeah. new every time. Like, oh, that's what that means. Yeah. Like it's, there's, I mean, they've tried to simplify it so much that so we can give you something to work, start with. But to think that you could even know all that in, in one days. go, By the in way, two it's days? step one. It's, it's step like one. It's like knowing how to do scramble legs and calling yourself a chef. Exactly. It I'm is like the, the minimum requirement. Yes. No, but it's quite right? last man. It. It's a libertarian. It's like, I'm going to give you the basics, and you're supposed to go get more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the way he looks at life in general. Like, you can't blame no. the guy for sticking to who he is. Like, so, but the change needed to happen. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's do this. So, Ray, a question for you is what... So, so in the thing that, let's say just from programming, so yeah. that, that alone, right? We see what people are doing yeah. differently than what maybe CrossFit is intended on, on it being. How, w if you had to speak to an owner who's upset because of the way these things are, what would you tell them to do from a programming standpoint to start to shift that culture? We need to educate people as to why we program the way we do. Most yeah. gym, gym owners, like, they're so, I, and I fell into this trap too, where people are like, well, I need longer workouts to feel like I did something. I'm like, no, just because you didn't feel like you got your ass handed to you, that doesn't mean you got better. Yeah. You, I just handed you your ass and that was it. Yeah. Like, no, if uh, this is going to make you better, like, we need to think down the line, like 10 years from now, what's going to make you better? If I'm making you work out 30 minutes a day and just demolishing you every single time to make you feel better about yourself, I'm not doing you any service. Yeah, I'm probably hurting you faster, you. Yeah. and you're going to be broken sooner. And, and you, but it's education. It's, it's telling people that sweating for 30 minutes does not mean you're getting exactly, leaner. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Otherwise, we could train in saunas and yeah. get all lean. Like exactly. we all get a six-pack. And I think it's important, though, that that's not easy. Let, let, let's say that there are many gyms now that are doing things the way mm -hmm. that CrossFit would prefer maybe that they're not. While they have every right to, mm -hmm. those are the ones that are mad, right? How does that guy make this change there's going to be friction along the whole way, right? And you've been, had an affiliate for long enough. I'm going to guess that if you want to change it to do it the right way, it takes a sl it's slow. And you're going to also have to be willing to cut some people out. Yes, you yeah, aren't going to like. By the it. way, and that coach has to educate himself mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Yes, before absolutely. you educate your people, you have to educate yourself. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I still learn every month. I still every year, you know that I come yeah. up with new shit. Uh, like it's a craft. And like all craft, you have to work for it. It takes time. It's the ramen noodle guy, like yeah. who's fucking insane. He's been doing it for ten years, and he still learns every day. And he reads about ramen noodles at night. And do you do you are you doing that? Yeah. Do you read about your craft at night before you go to bed? Do you spend waking moments thinking how you can get better as an owner, better as a coach, better all this, or are you just dicking around watching reality TV? <laughs> because if you are, then you have no right to bitch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's Sorry. definitely. Sorry, like time, spend the time on your craft. Oh. Or don't complain, but you don't get to do both. Yeah. And Greg Laxman created the shit, so I think he knows CrossFit enough to want to direct it a certain way. Yeah, and I'll always pull back to the thing is that when, when I own any business that I've ever owned, the moment anyone from outside tells me that I'm doing something wrong or that I should do something this way, the first thing in my head is, well, fuck you, it's mine. <laughs> yes. Right? And if I'm glad, like what he has built is his. Right? It's not yours. It's not anyone who's bitching. It's not any affiliate. It's not. What, what that is, whatever it is he's doing, is every fucking right to do. So whether he wants to slam the fucking thing into the side of the mountain, then you Steve better start right. something that's going to help people and do things the way you want to do. Whatever affiliate, <laughs> whatever that is. But even is. if he does that, you can, your affiliate can still do good. Yeah, because you, you can always still do the things that right you do. Right now, we are at a stage where you don't need Greg Glassman anymore. It's true. Unless you're just starting like right now and the next six months you're trying to bring people through the door and CrossFit name can help you. Outside of that situation, you don't need, you cr CrossFit is a training system. That's what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. The marketing, that was a plus at some point that we got through the CrossFit games. But that is, if you're relying on that marketing to make you successful in business, 
You're in for a rude awakening. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not you either. It never was, and it was never meant to be you on the ground no, level. And that's not the marketing for your business anyway. You do it, not CrossFit. I don't think I asking. ever got anyone coming in the door like, <coughs> I want to be that guy. Yeah. Like, people came in and was like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds. Hey, yeah. I want to catch up with my kids. Hey, like, I, I'm, I'm diabetic. I'm going to die. I need to do something. Because the people that come into your gym or want help want help on themselves. Yeah. They don't want help because they saw someone who's fitter than them. Yeah. Or saw someone do it a lift or, away, or doing yeah, butterfly. Yeah. They don't even know what the fuck that is. No, but like th that's a little bit the culture at the beginning of CrossFit when they were making fun of global gyms. So now everybody's like, yeah, I'm a coach, not a trainer and stuff like that. But at the end, we'll, we're seeing the same people. Mm -hmm. The people going to the global gym are the same people coming to your gym. Yeah. So we're not the global gym in the culture in the sense of CrossFit is, is better than that mm -hmm. to most global gyms. But it's the same people. And so it's the same job, really. Mm -hmm. It's the same. You're going to take care of people because they came for the same reason, which is not dying, uh, fucking losing weight because, you know, obesity yeah. in the U.S. It, so you're doing the job of a global gym just better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CrossFit is better than the regular. That I will agree with that. But that's what the job is, is do that job better so we can help people. But understand that your job is a global gym job. The same. But... You can have your own coffee shop, hipster coffee shop, be the best barista in the, barista in the world. Is your job the same as the guy at Starbucks? Technically, yes. Are you doing it the same way? Fuck no. You are a craftsman who's doing the best espresso ever, but technically the job is still the same as the dude who presses a button on the machine at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. But that's not who you are, right? Mm -hmm. Stop thinking like yeah but uh you know um starbucks should do a better job explaining what coffee is so they bring me clients no no that's not how this works you're still a global gym it's basically the same shit we can call it whatever we want the crossfit gym is a global gym where people come to lose weight and sweat their problems out and all that stuff yeah we still we'll we are trainers and there's nothing wrong with it and on on that craftsman note ray like how, how you've had your affiliate for 12 years mm -hmm. 12 years ago and how long were you coaching much before that? No, I was. So about 12 years you've been coaching. And now you're still continuing to learn. You're still continuing to invest in your education. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're doing our Strong Fits mentoring program. You're doing, you know, you're here for the week. But by the way, we in Holland just yeah. showed yeah. up for the <laughs> um, So, I mean, you're still actively seeking things. And while nothing that we do at Strong Fit, I would say, is is outside or unapplicable to CrossFit. It is still outside of the CrossFit sphere um, that, that you're in within the seminars and stuff yep, you're doing. Yeah. What is it that maybe pulled you in or brought you into where you're learning from Julian? I just, well, I found out about Julian from Coach Bergner. Oh, that's right, because he did our He did your course two years ago. Yeah. yeah, so he said, you need to talk to Julian. And so I sat down with him for an hour on FaceTime and I was mm -hmm. like, blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, like all these things. And I started applying all that right away. Yeah. And just teaching people how to be stable in the squat and how to be stable overhead. Like all those things are very, very applicable to CrossFit. Yeah. They're ubiquitous. They're movement principles. Yeah, exactly. That's it's it's just for, yeah. stop moving, moving like crap. Is moving. Yeah, moving, moving is moving. Is moving. I don't care if you're doing Zumba, or you're doing yeah. playing golf. It's all the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, whatever works for you. Whatever you works for you. And but in general for me, I've always been the type of person that I want to understand everything. I don't need to agree with it, but I need to be able to understand what everyone is saying yeah. so that if someone comes to me and says, this is what I do, then I need to be able to converse with them and to tell them why, why my method might be better or, or maybe my method sucks. And <laughs> like <laughs> Maybe your method, but at least we can have a conversation. Exactly, we can have a conversation. Being stuck into well, that's what the book says. And that's, yeah. that's I mean, I, I see that even with people within CrossFit and I tell them I'm doing strong fit stuff they're like oh that stuff da, da, da. I'm like do you even understand it you know like, yeah, do you even know what we talk yeah. about and I, I sneak stuff some, some of that stuff into when I'm teaching seminars like and the reason why it works is because it works it's like hey you're butt winking your squat let's fix this so let's create torque this way yeah. okay oh so no knees out doesn't work all the time <laughs> yeah but that, that's the thing is you think it's a, oh it's a strong fit thing no it's not no it's not it's, it's a, a movement, movement thing. yeah exactly that's all and like I take the name out i don't care like yeah. it helps people we're all good because yeah. everything that you've talked about since i've known you julian is none of it's been proprietary no none of this is mine i just put shit together that's, yeah. all, that's really what i do and as I'm i contextualist I and exactly and i messaged julian with a quote that louis simmons had said from the west side documentary uh -huh. he said he said, how did he put it? He was like, someone was giving him shit for, he said, well, you didn't invent using bands and chains, Louis. And Louis said, well, <coughs> he said, well, 
I said, of course I didn't invent it. I didn't invent toilet paper either, but I'm fucking smart enough to use it. Yes. And I think that's the same way it is. <laughs> yes. People yes. like you and people like Julian, you come across something however it is you come across it. Mm -hmm. It comes into your life however, yeah. and you because choose you look and you because yeah. you're a student of the game, yeah. because yeah. you keep your eyes and ears yeah. open, because you, you're a sponge for knowledge. Yeah. That's how it comes And you have to you. choose to experience it in order before you can because decide what it is. Because you're fucking so egotistic. You refuse to listen to anybody else but that one person that for whatever reason can't, you know, you call your mentor or whatever. Like, I have, it's, there's so many of that where suddenly they come at me saying, yeah, but I'm doing here, I'm doing there. So it becomes a political reason for listening or not to me. Yeah. I'm like, are you fucking insane right now? By the way, you're not a craftsman if you do that. I don't care. Like yeah, Jimi Hendrix used to go to local bars yeah. to listen to shitty band, band playing, compared to him, obviously, just so he could get that one sound. Out of the whole evening, he was like, yeah, but there might be something good. Mm -hmm. So he would go and just listen because music was his thing. Okay, so if he's doing it, if the best in the world are doing it, why are you not doing it? Coach B, 72 years old, came to my seminar and everything and started to tell everybody, oh yeah, I was, I was wrong, you were right, this is better. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's not go that far. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't say Coach B was wrong <laughs> in teaching the snatch. But uh, he was like, yeah, this is better, can we implement it, how we do this? 72 years old. The guy sent how many people to the Olympics? Uh, if he can say that at 72, what's your excuse? Yeah. yeah. All of you out there that get so stuck because yeah. it's a strong fit thing. It's not a strong fit thing. It's something I picked up somewhere else. Yeah. It's movement. And, I, and I, that starts to upset me because there's a lot of stuff they could use, but they get so fucking stuck with names and political stuff. And I'm like, <gasps> oh my choosing God. to stop learning. It's weird. That upsets me. Yeah. Because you know, do you know what you're doing to your own life when you do that? Like this is like that weird tribalism or religious thinking of this is what I learn I'm going to stay there I'm like but yeah, there's never a place for growth is that, is that the life you want because <laughs> you're going to run into a wall real fast and the problem is you influence people so they're going to run into a wall yeah. either too and since you're in charge of people's health sometimes life body you don't have the right to do that you have a responsibility toward them and your responsibility is to learn more you have no right to do that at least that's how I see coaching yeah. So Ray, where are you get, where are you taking these, or what direction do you plan on taking some of these courses that you're doing now? Then, uh, for you mean as far as the weightlifting stuff? Yeah, yeah. We're still in the process of building that building up. Building them all. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, now we have this whole new world in front of us. Like you can do whatever you want. We can do whatever yeah. we want. So one of the things I'm really excited about is doing an actual workshop specifically to talk about mobility for weightlifting. Yeah. Like Coach Bergner says yeah. that you need mobility, you need speed, and you need strength last. A lot of yeah. weightlifters, a lot of crossfitters, or Coach B, as Coach B says this to people a lot, he said, your biggest weakness right now is you're too strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's your weakness, because now you're muscling the crap out of it. Like, yeah. if you don't have the, you can't get in the right position, God help you. Yeah. So we're actually yeah. gonna do, like, I'm really excited about this, the mobility course. We're gonna spend an entire day, or 90% of the day with just a PVC pipe, and we're gonna make you do the movement super, super slow. Yeah. So you, uh, you respect every millimeter of movement. Like athletes, or uh, athletes, why do people want to keep a muscle up? Because they don't have the control from here to here. Yeah. This position here, they can't, they can't control yeah. it, or maybe they can't even, their body doesn't know what to do there. Neuro neurologically, their body is blocking that position because it it's unsafe. Yeah, it's exactly. like, well, because For you're not strong reason. there. Yeah. I'm not stable here. I physically will not allow you there. I can do dips. Doesn't mean shit. Doesn't. It's the like, can, is can you do else? from yeah. here to here? And that's actually what I teach people. I say, hey, start on the bottom, top of a, bottom of, a, of a dip. Now, can you go from here to here in 10 seconds? Yes or no? And you can. Like, can you, you even do the eccentric part? Yeah, can yeah, you exactly the eccentric yeah. part from here to here? Can you do this part super slow? If the answer is no, then we, why are you kipping? Yeah, you, you're gonna just—it's just a matter of time if you blow out your shoulder, and that's stupid. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. broken people don't train. Coaches, if you own a gym, broken people don't train, so don't let them do stupid things. Yeah. Stop letting and them if take, you don't train, take, take you don't their get better. precious money you don't over, get better over to a They, they always talk about, that's a thing, uh, now is the, you know, we get asked about performance all the time. I'm like, first of all, performance for whom? Because right. most of your athletes, I don't, what do they call performance? Oh, I need to get better. I was like, well, then don't get hurt. <laughs> like we are looking, like <laughs> people lose on average like 15% of volume per year not training mm -hmm. because of shoulder injury, yeah. because stuff like that. Like, you yeah. want to get better on the snatch? Don't get hurt. Two, yeah. three missed sessions at a time. <coughs> 
adds up yeah. over uh, the course oh, of a year. Yes, it does. And we're talking usually about four weeks, and then you go into a cycle, and then you miss four weeks again. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's every time you have to come back. Yeah. Plus Is your sweat don't get hurt? Plus the stress <coughs> and having that injury in your head now for the rest. I mean, oh, dude, getting I hurt at all. I mean, you, that's the f number one thing that you need to avoid. No, everything like, is, is, is mental. For me, I can front squat 160 kilos. I can only clean 120 because when I was learning how to clean, I hit my elbow on my knee oh, and I messed right. up my wrist. And yeah. then I did that. This was messed up for three months. I did the other arm right after. And then I did this arm. So anytime I get past 100 kilos, my brain freaks out. Mechanics go to crap because my body's blocking and doesn't want that mm -hmm. position. I'm more comfortable snatching 105 kilos than I'm cleaning 105 kilos crazy it's stupid <laughs> because I hurt myself and well, the best thing that coach Bergner ever did for me was and he did this because I was an idiot there was like three summers ago I was doing a gymnastics body uh, gymnastic bodies program gymnastics mm -hmm. stuff and on top of that I was doing a catalyst athletics on the minute on the every minute on the minute program at the same time I was doing this concurrently four weeks into it I'm at coach Bergner's garage I can't even clean 70 kilos he looks at me and he's like What's wrong with you? <laughs> so I explain to him what I'm doing. I go, how do I resolve these two? I want to get better at gymnastics and weightlifting. He goes, you're not going to like what I'm going to tell you. And I go, okay. He goes, you need to take three weeks off. And I go, what? Yeah, he goes, exactly. He goes, your nervous system is wrecked. Yeah. Like you were just, you've demolished yourself. I'm like, can go I go surfing? Go hike. He says, yeah. yeah. I go, can I go surfing? He goes, you can go for a walk. I'm like, yeah. okay. He's like, here's what you can do. You can drill with a PVC pipe every day. I'm like, okay. But you know what? That three weeks of stupid PVC pipe was the best thing he ever did mm. for me because I'm in positions and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm like, I'm doing this thing right now. Can we fix that? Yeah. Okay, now I'm not really pressing up. Okay, let's press up. Okay, now my butt's 10 feet behind me, which by the way, people, if you suck at overhead squats and you say your shoulder mobility is bad, it's probably not your shoulders. It's your hips are 10 feet behind you and that's why <laughs> you're in a bad <laughs> position. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the way, you having suddenly going like, how do I do that? And being in a with a PVC pipe, you can actually answer the question. Yes, exactly. If it's white overhead, you can't because you you're can. dead. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, if you try to go, huh, with 60 kilo overhead, you, the bar is going to kill gonna you. You're not going to find yeah, it. You can't do it like that. <laughs> it not. doesn't work like that. People say, oh, I need more weight to feel it. And I go, <laughs> no. you just admitted to being a motor moron. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't know where you are in space. So maybe you do need less weight and yeah. focus on that. And knowing where you are. Yeah, yeah. like do that's a bigger problem. Body? No. Did you see, oh, that was so funny. You saw the protraction, retraction, elevation of the shoulder. Yeah, I was struggling with that. Yeah, but <laughs> I had even a bodybuilder going like this. So so people who don't know, there's an exercise where I ask them to do a uh, simple like elevate. So contracting the trap, that's elevation of the shoulder blade versus retraction versus protraction. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing the terrace major, you know, spread the lats, or I'm going shoulder blades together or I'm elevating. So I'm contracting the traps or in or there. And so well, I And for those of you that have been watching, Ray and I were also kind of doing that yeah. without yeah. letting you know. No, but <laughs> you're supposed to, can you just elevate your shoulder blade by flexing the trap? Can you just flex the trap? So not lifting your shoulder yeah. up, which you have everybody did, but just flex, just like when you f fake the peck, that. can you do that with the trap? Can you just go here? And I discovered that most people don't spend enough time flexing in the mirror. <laughs> Here's the problem. I feel like I spend a lot of time flexing in the not mirror. Not correctly then. And Work definitely harder. not the right way. Not the I it's have, a craft. And I have a big traps and a big upper back. Yeah. So I'm like, I, well, Julian announced, puts his thing out, and I'm like, sweet. And then first dude comes through, does the deal, and I was like, oh, he's pretty jacked, and that looked like he was doing the things, and Julian's like, what the fuck was that? All you're doing is moving your shoulders. Yeah, okay. That's, that was me. So, so that, <laughs> no, 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 but here's the deal. Was I was oh. so glad. Because that's exactly how I was going to do it. I was like, yep, traps yeah. are huge. So I say flex. So, so people know. I say flex the trap. You can see my shoulder doesn't move. I'm just flexing the trap. At first, everybody went yeah. like this. I'm like, no, I didn't say move your shoulder. I say engage the muscle. So, th but th those are simple, like bodybuilder. Even the bodybuilder was doing that. Uh, no, that's not what I said. Uh, I can't do that. Simple body control. I, c I've, I can't do any of that. They work I, on I'm it. Right I know. I know. No, no, I know. It is. It's, it's been your almost, body. It's been almost ten days. Guys, and can I'm you squeeze like your legs. Can you can you squeeze your hammy and make it cramp? No. Work on it. Yeah. Like legs are bent, you should be able to squeeze your hammies and start to get to cramping. So what I what I what I learned from that experience is is just because you can use a muscle some way. Like I had no command over it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I learned. I have no control over it. It's I literally right. can't just squeeze some of the muscles that are the biggest muscles on my body. Yeah, yeah but you know, like for just example, can you it. squeeze a uh, tennis blade, uh, sorry, a tennis ball between your shoulder blade? Not right? without just pulling my but shoulders. Not without you know? moving, just by 
engaging the muscle properly. Th yeah. That there's an exercise for you. You want to get better after the PVC pipe? Do that shit for 20 minutes every day. Yeah. Because then you'll know exactly how to engage your trap or not engage your traps. I'm actually so after this experience, I'm half tempted to when I go to intelligent strength is just paying for a couple of uh, just posing instructional yeah. sections. This is how some dance, some dancer. Right, comes from the physique world, from yeah. bodybuilding. I don't know if people know that, but he was um, he was a physique guy of fitness, whatever the competition was, right? Mm -hmm. And he was talking about that at an Invictus camp, where he was like, his training, like his coach would make him pose, you know, like the, he was, I think it was a tricep pose or something, mm -hmm. and he would start with a calf, so five seconds, then calf, hammy, five seconds, right? calf, hammy, quad, calf, hammy, quad, glute, calf, hammy, quad, glute, oblique. And then he would go like this until all the muscle on that side was uh, were contracted. And if he m if he let go of anything, he had to start over. And if uh, you understand for an hour, and if you one understand, hour. Like, like if you're just oh, listening oh, to that and have never mean. tried any of those things, you're oh, like, well, it sounds easy. Those are just yeah, your muscles, no, and you no, just no, do yeah. them. And it's like, fuck, no, no <laughs> it's not. But that gave him a muscle control that to this day he uses for CrossFit. It is is extremely gifted, obviously, but it is part of why he can do what he can do is the control of his muscle is just insane. He knows his body. So if you say, don't use your lumbar erectors, he'll be like, okay. Well, that's, he knows. Just, that's one more piece where, you know, that from back in the day where it's like, oh, fucking the global gyms, like curls are stupid. We do, you know, yeah, that stuff. Mirrors. It's, like, it's like, well, let's just be a little bit more inclusive it, It's here. funny. Like a lot of my old members, they'll see me doing stuff and they go, why are you doing curls now? I go, because they're actually, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I've had to say many times, like I was wrong actually do it this way this is yeah and that's humbling but I told I told the daily from for 15 years oh my gosh until I got into all talk right and then I was like oh and I let people do that shit like this and then they were yeah. going still talk on that hand and I'm like oh and I let them do yeah I did yeah if you're a coach you have to you, you have to know you're gonna fuck up by the way you, and I think if you're a coach you have at to some point you're, gonna make you're not going to be as good of a coach as you are 10 years down oh. the road if you're doing it, right? Which, which, well, I'm, I Two mean, years down the road, but what right. I mean is that first year, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and teach people wrong. Or looking, and the if second you look year, back at your career. And the third oh, and the fourth, like, you know, you, that is the name of the game is if you're going to get better, now you're going to have to help these people by telling them, sorry, I was wrong. I'm, I need to I'm do wondering this why I didn't understand the freestyle stuff two years ago. Mm -hmm. It pisses me off today that I'm like, how do you not know that? Years just, ago, because and, and I know the same feeling like you guys described, where you feel like you just wasted that time. Then, yeah, like, fuck, how Which much, how much good could I have been doing if I exactly. had this? Right. By the way, it doesn't work like that. But <laughs> you, you're supposed to. If you don't have that feeling, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. If you don't feel a shame on how you taught certain movements five years ago, you're doing it. You haven't learned shit. That's the problem. I get people coming in to level two courses, been coaching for five years, and I go teach the squat. You have seven minutes, and I don't intend for you to be done in seven minutes. You yeah. get guys done 30 seconds, and I go, what? Uh -huh. Did you not see that his knees are caving in, his ankles are collapsed, his back is rounded like this? When he starts, then he's running, tucking under like this, his shoulders are like this, he's not getting below parallel, all these things. And people are like, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, and that's you where get I, lose that. my, I lose my fucking mind. It's, yeah, it's like I tell people, if you're coaching regularly, if you have a level one, and you are, you have literally level one for longer than a year, but you coach regularly, you're doing something wrong. You should be going to your level two within six to twelve months. Yeah, maximum. Otherwise, you've got like the, the four years of coaching. The athlete terribly. version of yeah. taking the level one, if you will. The, let's yeah. Let's explain again what the level one is. It is an introduction to CrossFit. Yeah. Like the fact that you can have it and open an affiliate is a whole different ball game. Uh, it's a whole different problem that we could discuss about the merits of that one. Uh, but that's it. You're supposed to learn more. You're not done. You're not ready. Yeah. Right? I remember what your dad told Luke. He was right. You're not ready. It drives me crazy. I have coaches that I mentor who work at other gym at these gyms. And like the coach is like, I'm going to go get my level two. I'm going to go take the level two. And the other coaches or even the owner who still has their level one. Why would you do that? Like, yeah. Why would you not do that? Yeah. And I know these yeah. gyms. I've seen these gyms coach. I've seen their programming. I'm like, Oh dear God, why? Like, I, we have 60 some affiliates in San Diego, yeah. and I think I can only comfortably send people to maybe one or two of them. And that's a problem. Yeah. Because the other ones are not doing CrossFit. Like they're paying the affiliation, and there's people are complaining about that. Like they're complaining, what do I get on my affiliation? I'm like, you get to use the methodology. Yeah. But a lot of them aren't even using the methodology. Yeah. So why are you paying? Like I've heard, yeah. I've heard yeah. issues say, if you're not going to do what we're saying, we would prefer you not to affiliate. Because you're making the rest of us look bad. 
I agree completely with that. Yeah, then why pay? Why and pay a- again, you're supposed to study your craft. Well, yeah. This is where I get the most, I'm like, well, I'm running a business. Yes, we all yeah. do it. We all had businesses to run. I was doing that as a single lad while running the world. So you have absolutely no excuse, I'm yeah. sorry. You're just lazy on that one. Yeah. That upsets me because like, I've been into enough places now to go like sometime. Like, and, but those are the people also that will bash global gym. That's where I get upset too. Yeah. I'm like, dude, do you understand that most trainers, at least at those global gym, at least have experience with dealing with people, mm-hmm. with human beings in yeah. front of them, because they suck at that one too. Like that's what the, it, the game, the, the craft takes so long, because you, after all you learn all that stuff, you still have to learn to deal with humans, yes, with people in front of you. That's another skill and stuff like that. So bash the global gyms, but at least trainers have the experience of dealing with people, and you need that as well. Like. Everybody needs to bring themselves the fuck down. Yeah. Look in the mirror, you're not as good as you think you are. You never are. Yeah. I'm not either. Like this, ch- regularly, I do shit like playing pool and everything to realize I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah, it's like. Uh, bring it down. <laughs> bring it down. <laughs> I think, uh, well, we, we covered a lot of what's wrong, if you yeah. will, right? Mm-hmm. But I think there still is a lot of. Things are looking good, I think. In I'm general. excited for the I think for the, the direction is good. I'm I think guys excited. like you now. No, but, and I still love all those CrossFit affiliates. That's yeah. why I'm doing what I do because yes. they are trying to help the world. It's just we're trying to make it better. Yeah. And sometimes it requires not cuddling people about where the problem is. I've criticized CrossFit on the stuff I thought was wrong. Namely, for example, people opening affiliates within, you know, just with the level one stuff like that. But Never ever have I criticized CrossFit in the idea of I don't like CrossFit. It was always you're doing awesome, you're doing things we have never seen before. CrossFit has changed the way we train women forever. He has made beasts out of women that in five years, like I'd never see, I'd see the results. That still boggles my mind what Dave Castro has been able to push women to do. So it, it always came, all my criticism came out of love for CrossFit saying, can we do it better, please? It was always that. Is, so it's the same thing with all of you guys. We, I, I have love for everybody. It's just like, can we please do it better? It's more like, can we do it the way you, taught you, you were taught to do it? <laughs> yeah. Can, can we? Yeah. Can, can <laughs> we go back to the necessity to do things a certain way because yeah. there's a reason for it? And I think uh, the, all of it comes down to, like you said, that was going to come down to this process of educating and forming mm-hmm. your coaches, your clients. Anyone in the space needs to try at least to get this across to to these people. Biggest and difference between a global gym and a CrossFit gym is that. Yeah. Is there are people there that will educate you about fitness. Whereas in a global gym, they just make you train. Yeah. In a CrossFit gym, you can learn, you can gain knowledge about mm-hmm. fitness. Yeah. That's the difference. And if you have a gym where the culture isn't about learning each time you come then in. Then it's not a CrossFit gym. Exactly. It's not. And then, and then just because you pay the affiliate fee doesn't mean you're a CrossFit gym. Sorry. It's Sorry to tell you. And so it's continue not. to do that, but don't call it CrossFit then. Or, or, you, need, or, you, or, 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 or you need to start teaching people now. You know what I mean? That's but the right way. why are you doing it? If it's not for that, why are you doing it? If you called it CrossFit, it's because you have... I would hope the intent of helping people and stuff like that. You don't know, then educate yourself. Yeah. YouTube, instead of watching the fucking Kardashians, go on YouTube, early Crossman, Glassman, CrossFit videos, just learn your craft. By the way, it takes time. Yes, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, it yeah. fucking sucks at first. Yeah, but it's like Jiu-Jitsu, man. It's going to take you eight years to get a black belt. Yeah. And now, though, it gives you the opportunity to do, you know, you can take your guys' workshops to any really any any place any global direction gyms. global, global gyms. so we can you introduce can, Olympic can lifting to more people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean I mean I think there's just there's so many opportunities now for the people around the space adjacent to CrossFit if you will because of the way they're doing hands off with the media with these certs mm-hmm. with with all the thing that I think all of that leaves the future from an educational standpoint on really good footing but maybe we can grow CrossFit where it should be which is taking over. That was the point at the beginning. Like 14,000 affiliates is great, but that's the number of gyms in LA. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I'm joking, but uh, (laughs) probably not that far off, actually. But uh, you know what I mean? Like if you look at the number of global gyms in the world, CrossFit is still a tiny percentage. Yeah. Everybody, we can do, we can do better. There's still room for growth. (coughs) I mean, I go to the Arnold every year, which is one of the biggest, actually the biggest fitness event out there. It is. It's actually the, it's the largest sporting event, multi-sports event Mm -hmm. in the world. It's not the Olympics. More athletes, more different sports. It's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And the CrossFit people and the CrossFit space there, 
tiny. Like the world, people that get very tunnel vision and CrossFit forget how big the world of bodybuilding is and, body and all that stuff. You like just, even MMA, just as forget. big as MMA is, you go there and it's there, but it's the size of CrossFit. Yeah. The biggest stage is bodybuilding yeah. because people want it, I want to look like that. Yeah. If, like I swear, like at CrossFit, we should start pushing toward that. Look at the way the girls look. Because they look yeah. better than most fitness models. Yeah. And then you can just sell it as, hey guys, look at the way the girls look. Yeah, <laughs> Come it's the easiest thing out there. But again, if you look at all that stuff, bodybuilding still draws the biggest crowds. Yeah. So while CrossFit is, is big, in the grand scheme of things, even with the social media stuff, with the Instagram stuff, collectively on two platforms, two separate accounts, it still was around, I think, 10 or 12 million people, which is a lot if it's me. Yeah, but However, to Facebook or Instagram, that's nothing. It's not even in the bodybuilding space or I in the fitness Kai space Green in the world. A followers. Yeah, yeah. I like follow a couple uh, women who have just butts that have three million yeah. followers. You know, <laughs> so like, you know, it's not that big of a deal yeah. yet. It's important to us, and it's important to a lot of people we deal with. But it it's has to get way, better it's before it's it can the get way bigger. They did it, that's all. Yeah. That's, it's just people. Cro Crossfitters have always liked making what we call in French a storm in a glass of water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they, they like to every year they lose their shit on the open because that guy didn't complete the rep correctly oh or, gosh. or George Bridges did his deadlift a certain way. Yeah. CrossFit are like to make a lot of bubbles, yeah. right? And so this year it's that one. Yes, it's a big one, I agree. It could have been there, done actually is, there is something every year now that I think about it. No there's matter what it is. There's always something. It's never anything on this scale. Crossfitters like to make bubbles, yeah. all right? So that one is, okay, he could have done it a bit more smoothly, I agree. But at the end, it'll be just fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah. Well, that has us about wrapped up today. We're, all, yeah, we're, all go to we're over the hour. The yep. place is going to get pretty busy here. Yep. So um, you find me on Instagram at Tyler F. and Stone. Julian's at StrongFit1 still. still. I haven't hustled the other one. I'm still getting and, the and CrossFit <laughs> name, but that's coming soon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Ray, how can people follow you on Instagram? <laughs> Ray Ragno. At uh, Ray Ragno. And what about, uh, how can they get information on the weightlifting courses and stuff like that from you? Uh, just hit me up at Ray Ragno. <laughs> okay. They're, they're, build it, they're building They're it. building it all. Yeah, so okay. if you have any questions about that, if you want to, if you want to host or anything like that, he's the and guy. And say hi to Coach B for me. I will. Me as well. Yes. And he so says hello, actually. Awesome. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, that'll Still do it. my hero. Strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu for Europe. Uh, YouTube, StrongFit, subscribe, share, tell a friend. We still reviews. have a social media. We still do. I did not give it up. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you next week. See ya. See you guys.